Harvard scholar and a three-time All-American, he's the number one basketball player in the country, and second to none. This is his coach, Butch Van Bredekoff, a former Tiger player and captain. For his three years back at Old Nassau, a record three Ivy League championships and Coach of the Year honors. And this is the Princeton team, the most successful team in the history of the university. A team in which each and every man was an integral part. A team which broke scoring records on its march toward a championship. And it is to this team that did so much for Princeton that the Alumni Council dedicates this film. Dillon Gymnasium at Princeton University has echoed to the sounds of many Tiger stars of the past that holds the trophies that Princeton men and Princeton teams have earned for their alma mater. The Heisman Trophy won by Dick Kazmaier and Ivy League basketball championships won by Princeton teams. During the 1964-65 season, you couldn't get seats in Dillon Gym it was sold out for a year because the Princeton basketball team was that great. It was truly the year of the Tiger. At the season opening, Princeton had six lettermen, eight sophomores, and the incomparable Bradley back from triumph in the Olympics. The early season games saw the development of the sophomores and the emergence of Princeton as one of the outstanding basketball teams of the nation. By late December in Madison Square Garden, the Tigers appeared for the first time in the Holiday Festival. A tremendous crowd of more than 18,000 people saw Princeton face Michigan in the semifinal. It's the Tigers' ball, and never before has an Ivy League team gone so far in this tournament. Don Roden back driving. Michigan's ball. The Wolverines ranked number one in the country. Number 33, Kazi Russell, feeds Bill Bunton. These are two great teams. Now watch Bradley, number 42. Beautiful hook shot. Princeton again. Both teams almost even in this first half. Bradley fires to Walters. That makes it 35 all. And Bradley steals the ball. He brings it back up court for Princeton. Watch these tremendous moves now by Bradley. He goes all the way. Number 33, Kazi Russell, the high-scoring star of Michigan. The shot is blocked by Hummer, but Comey makes it good. The Tigers defeated Syracuse in their tournament opener and Michigan down Manhattan. Now it's Bradley again. Scores on a jumper, 39-37 in favor of Princeton at the half. It's the Tigers' ball following intermission, and once more, Bradley shows his class. A nice screen by Robbie Brown. And two more points for the Tiger. Princeton's ball, Bradley on the far side. The shot misses, but Brown taps it in. With four and a half minutes to play, here's a bad break for the Tigers. Right here, 
Right there, Bradley commits his fifth foul. And after scoring 41 points, the sensational Princeton star is out of the game. He gets a four-minute standing ovation from the 18,499 persons in Madison Square Garden. But now the roof falls in on the Tigers. Michigan rallies from a 14-point deficit in these final minutes. Russell, Pomey, and Myers make this one for the Wolverines. Now Michigan with an all-court press. A steal by Thompson, and the Big Ten champions come to two points closer to Princeton. An offensive foul called on the Tigers. And Princeton still leads 78 to 76, less than a minute to go. Tigers ball, and they're in trouble. Comey and Thompson pull another steal. And the Wolverines tie the score, 78 to 78, with 36 seconds left to play. Michigan's ball now. They're taking their time to set up for that all-important last shot. Watch Russell, number 33. He starts his move. It's good. And time runs out on the Tigers. 80 to 78. They lose a heartbreaker to the University of Michigan. And the saddest man in the famous New York arena is Princeton's great Bill Bradley, who scored a mighty 41 points in a losing cause. At the beginning of the Ivy League season, the Tigers are favored to repeat as winners. And here are some of the individual reasons why. Robbie Brown, at six feet nine, the tallest Tiger court man in the school's history. Just a sophomore, Robbie number 40 here, in the post has a big future. And he gives valuable rebounding strength to the team. He scores here on a pass from Bill Bradley. That's Brown there, number 40. Gary Walters of Reading, Pennsylvania. Another sophomore and a very promising backcourt man. He's an alert defender and a capable ball handler. Here's Gary showing his great speed after stealing the ball. Ed Hummer of Arlington, Virginia. At 6'6", Ed was a high school All-American before coming to Princeton. And he's another outstanding sophomore on Coach Van Bredikoff's squad. Ed, number 34, moves well around the basket and is a fine defensive man. And here you see him moving in and getting a basket. Bob Harlow, a junior from Hinsdale, Illinois, the second of three brothers to play basketball at Old Nassau. Bob is a starter for the second season. Harlow is a high scorer for the Tigers, too, second behind Bradley. Now here you see him taking a pass from Bill and getting the basket. Also a junior is Don Rodenbach of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, the Tigers' third leading scorer and an excellent backcourt performer for Princeton. That's Don number 15. The return pass and a very nice one-hander. Bill Kingston of Santa Barbara, California is Bradley's roommate. Now a senior, he's won two varsity letters on Ivy Championship teams as a backcourt man. And here you see him taking a pass from Bradley to score. Another departing senior is Ken Shank of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Ken had a time for himself when he hit six in a row against Dartmouth here while substituting for Bill Bradley. And when Coach Van Bredikoff replaced him with substitute Bradley, Ken got a standing ovation. And here's Bill Bradley, everybody's All-America choice. Bill hails from Crystal City, Missouri, and he now owns every Princeton and Ivy League scoring record. This fabulous Princetonian captained the gold medal United States Olympic team at Tokyo. And as captain of Princeton, he led his college team to new heights. Bill does everything in basketball smoothly, easily, and superbly well. He's a fantastic performer in every facet of the game. 
A gentleman, he can be rough if he's harassed. One of the marvelous things about Bradley is his dedication to the team and at the same time averaging over 30 points per game. And of course, even the greatest can use a little help every now and then. In this case here, an opponent taps in Bill's shot. Cornell and Penn were tough foes for the Tigers during the year. When the Big Red invaded Dillon Gymnasium, Princeton was out to avenge a previous one-point loss. Interest was so great that the gym couldn't begin to hold all who wanted to come, so closed-circuit television was used to handle the demand. A few last words from Coach Van Bredikoff, and Princeton's basketball team is primed to go. The score now is 10-all, Princeton's ball, and Bradley with a beauty. The Tigers again and watch the old give and go. Roden back to Bradley and back to Don for the score. Cornell has led the Ivy League during most of the season, but the Tigers are changing that now. Harlow shot, rims the basket, but Bradley taps it in. It's 33-18 in favor of Princeton. Cornell's ball, but Rodenbach steals it. Walters takes it across the 10-second line. Back to Rodenbach. Harlow, Bradley who screens. And Bob's shot is there. Princeton continues to move the ball smoothly. Bradley once again shooting beautifully. And the Tigers lead an intermission 47 to 30. Now the second half. 3,250 people jam Dylan Jim and 1,700 more watch it on closed circuit TV around the campus. For both Cornell and Princeton, the Ivy League title is at stake tonight. Cornell's ball. Bob DeLuca shooting. Bradley rebounds for the Tigers. Over to Walters. And back to Bill for the score. Defensively as well as offensively, Princeton is up for this game. Hummer blocks the shot. Walters feeds it down court. Over to Rodenbach, and Don scores. More Tiger thievery coming up. Walter steals. And the Tigers' sophomores and juniors have really developed this year. Long pass to Bradley. Hummer, no good. But Bradley rebounds and gives to Ed for the basket. Who's excited? It's 63-39 in favor of the home team. Princeton is moving with poise and confidence. Walters driving and hooking. In desperation, Cornell applies an all-court press as Kingston and Roth bring it back. A shot from the side is missed, but Bradley is there to rebound and hook it in. There's wild excitement in Dillon Jim as Princeton staggers Cornell 107 to 84 and thereby wins an unprecedented third consecutive title. And Captain Bradley is hoisted to the shoulders of his teammates to cut that coveted net. And what a night Bill has had. 33 points in 33 minutes of play. And just a few nights later on March 3rd, 1965 in Dillon Gym, Bill Bradley plays his last home game for Princeton University. And every undergraduate who can is here to wish him well. The opponent is Pennsylvania. And the game's result is never in doubt. In his quiet, effective, and determined way, Bill leads his Tiger team to victory, scoring 19 points 
an 81 to 71 decision over the red and blue. Bill also lifts his career total to 2,326 points as his Princeton supporters cheer him on. It's a sad night and a happy night as this great athlete closes a chapter of one of the most phenomenal careers in the university's history. The game's end, even the Penn players throng to congratulate him. One of the greatest of college basketball players and happily, he played his college ball at Princeton. Everyone in Dillon Gym stands to give him a final salute. But what can one really do? What can the undergraduates give Bradley that he doesn't already have? Some Princetonians come up with a slightly illegal but coveted little memento. What else but a bell clapper from the top of Nassau Hall. Thanks from everybody at Princeton, Bill, and good luck in your future years. Next stop of the Tiger basketball team is College Park, Maryland, and the Eastern Regional Basketball Championships of the National Collegiate Athletic Association. The Princeton squad warms up in the University of Maryland's Cole Fieldhouse, which can hold 12,500 basketball fans. Television, radio, and the press. All are here to cover these 1965 Eastern Regional Championships. And so is a spirited group from old Nassau. Close up on the wolf back as the Princeton team is being introduced. And their first game against North Carolina State is ready to start. The tap goes to Princeton and White. They move that ball around now to get the feel of it as a smart ball club should. There's Bradley with it. And he feeds Robbie Brown for the basket. North Carolina State comes into this tourney with a record of 20 wins against four defeats. Hummer steals. Now Walters brings it back. Over to Roden back. Bradley. And a lovely basket. Thievery, though, works both ways. Watch this terrific play by Bradley coming up. The block there. Brings it back up court. And he's there for the basket. 16 to 11 in favor of Princeton. And here the Tigers are moving again. Bradley slides into the pivot. A quick pass to Hummer, who dunks it. Again, Princeton, which is dominating North Carolina State in this opening half. A steal for the Wolfpack. Shot is missed. Bradley rebounds. Over to Walters. Brings it back up court. A bounce pass to Harlow. And Bob scores. 27 to 16 at halftime. Following intermission, the Tigers keep up the pressure. Bradley fires to Harlow off the rim, but Bradley rebounds. Gives a great pass to Hummer for the score. Many people have commented on Bradley's wonderful team play. And here's another example. Watch this lead pass coming up. Beauty to Roth. With the score 48 to 30 against them, North Carolina State calls a timeout. Now with the clock running out, Princeton is freezing. Bradley thrills the capacity crowd by pouring through 27 points. Here come two of them now, as Princeton goes on to beat North Carolina State 66 to 48. The next day, 
Princeton's amazing basketball team comes out for the NCAA Eastern Regional Final against Providence. With a 24-1 record, the Friars are the heavy favorites. Princeton coaches Van Bredikoff and Donovan. Visiting coaches McGuire, Carnivale, and Julian are among the spectators. And here's the game, Princeton's ball. Bradley with a jumper. It's good. A shot by Providence is up and missed. And Harlow has it for Princeton. Walters dribbles back. Over to Bradley. And it's two more. Of course, even Bill is human. And sometimes things like this happen. A steal and two points for the Friars. Providence with the ball. A great play by Rodenbach. Bradley brings it back. To Hummer in the corner. Back to Bill. Across to Rodenbach. And Don sinks a nice one. 47-34 in favor of Princeton at the half. The Tigers moving again in the second half now. Bradley gives to Robbie Brown for two points. From out of bounds, Walters to Bradley. The well-balanced Friars, normally a happy-go-lucky scoring machine, find it hard to move against Princeton. Benedict shooting. Rims the basket and the Tigers take over. Bradley up court. Now they settle it down. Try underneath, missed. Another one. But Ed Hummer sinks the rebound. Providence is doing everything it can to get that ball. Now watch Bradley's instant reflexes here. His pass is blocked. He recovers and goes in to score. The Friars are really pressing now, but the Tigers have this game sewed up. Brown finds Harlow all alone for the hanger. Here's Bill Bradley on the foul line to make it 100 points for Princeton. When another fire scoring try is missed, Princeton rebounds, uncorks a fast break. Now watch this, Roth behind his back to Hummer for the score. It's Princeton all the way tonight. And there's another ovation for its All-American, Bill Bradley, when he leaves the game just 15 seconds from its finish. Bill scored 41 points in this Tiger victory over the fourth-ranked college team in America. When Princeton won it, 109-69, to Bradley is once more lifted to his teammates' shoulders to do the net-cutting honors. Another great night to remember. The night the Tigers won the 1965 NCAA Eastern Regional Championship. The night that more thousands of basketball devotees discover the magic of the Bradley touch and the incredible skill of this basketball superstar. He's on his way towards setting a five-game tournament record of 177 points and placing Princeton up as a number three team in the nation. Bill accepts the team trophy and then drags coach Bill Van Bredikoff out to share the spotlight. The final stop for Princeton's greatest of basketball teams is the NCAA final in Portland, Oregon's Memorial Coliseum. Though the Tigers lose to their nemesis top-ranked Michigan in the opener, the team and Bill Bradley gain new glory in the consolation game against Wichita. 
Bill Bradley's amazing performance in this consolation contest wins him an individual scoring record of 58 points. NCAA team and individual records fall as Princeton gains 118-82 victory over Wichita and Bill surpasses by two points Oscar Robertson's performance back in 1958. Bill makes 75% of his shots from the floor and 14 of 15 fouls for his 58 points. And at the urging of coach Bill Van Bredekoff and his teammates, he lets loose with a fantastic variety of shots that displays his uncommon ease of shooting. The most valuable player award of the tournament goes to Captain William Warren Bradley of Princeton University in the year of the Tiger.